touch a bearing. Smooth to the touch, no resistance, no warmth, no surprises. It's machine made. A handcrafted object is different. It invites touch. It sets up kind of a conversation between the craft maker and the craft user. Hey, check out these handcrafted toys by Ann Wood and Dean Lucker of Stillwater, but don't touch them. People will say things like, oh, I had one of these kind of wind-up toys when I was a kid. And, and it gets them really excited about losing a lot of the responsibility that we all have as adults and to get back to a, maybe a freer state. And that happens a lot of times when people are looking at the work and seeing it for the first time. I think it reminds people of when they were a child, and I'm really interested to get that sort of recall from adults for them to remember. When you didn't have to worry about things and you just made things because it was fun. What's the power that makes you creative? Where does that come from? Is it something larger than ourselves? I think it is. I can take something that's really kind of throwaway or seen as rather trashy and make it into something really beautiful and personal. Glitter is Anne. I think sequences and rick rack and dingly balls and doesn't it just make you feel like you're rich? <laughs> I think of, of of a very layered coat when I think of Anne. The wonder of machines, they have their own lives. I wonder what they are. Dean is a mechanical man. <laughs> <laughs> a tin man. A gear brain, a gear. I could just see inside of his head sometimes all these gears that he's reading about in books are all turning around in his brain. He's kind of a metal guy too, a metal man. Mainly a mechanical wizard. Before I met Dean, I was using a lot of animals in my imagery.
And everyone always said, "Why well, wouldn't it be great, Anne, if your things came alive? Because they look like they should be moving. And I met Dean, and he knew how to do it. So that was, that was pretty exciting to meet someone that had such a similar vision as I. The history of sculpture is something that you look at but you can't touch. And uh, I like arcade games and mechanical things because you have to participate with them in order to complete the sculpture's purpose. I think touch is also a metaphor for care. And that's, that's what I think making objects that have some sort of sacred quality or magical quality that people will go, wow. Oh, I think I might use these here. And I think a lot of that is inherent in, in the touch of the hands to, to the thing that's being made. There is some power left when someone has really cared about how something is made. We figure out by, by other people touching it if the message that we want to say is coming through. Needing to have that element to complete the whole circle, you know, the viewer, the, the thing, and, and myself. see art, you know, made just for artists. For us, giving a part of who we are to someone else and, and that they cherish it. You know, so many things in our life we just throw away. And, and I'm imagining or hoping that some of these things will be heirlooms and be given to children or passed on through generations. That would be a real honor to know that. I've been also thinking about pine cones. Um, I don't know <laughs> why. We've been collecting pine cones on, the, on our car, had a small collection. These beautiful little green pine cones. One of the reasons why I like pine cones is that it isn't like a seed has one chance. A pine cone has many chances because there's many seeds contained mm -hmm. within the pod. And we all have many chances to, to, to get it right. To get it right. <laughs>